I'm Jennifer Sir. Welcome to the Sewing Room and our Jobs in Fashion series. Today, we're speaking with Colleen Quinn, San Francisco designer and couturier. She has been designing for the last 25 plus years here in San Francisco, making gowns, beautiful gowns for celebrities and debutantes and socialites all over the US and in Europe as well. I'm very excited for you to learn about what it means to be a couturier and how that might be a little different from a regular fashion designer. So without further ado, here's Colleen. Welcome Colleen, thanks for being here today. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm so excited to be here with you. That's wonderful. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your journey, about your education and how you got to where you are now and sort of where you are now? <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's, you know, um, let's go back to when I really was inspired by fashion. So I, I'm a fashion designer and, and of course I'm an artist too, but you know, I started at a very young age at like five years old. So my mother was my first teacher. Um, and, you know, as it progressed ever since I was five years old and I started like kind of even, you know, designing, she was teaching me how to sew. And, and then, uh, I learned about fabric and we all went shopping at Brightex. <laughs> Brightex was like the thing to do, but, you know, so as I, you know, was cultivated in this kind of environment with my mother through art and fashion, um, when I came to my teenage years, I was going, oh, okay. So, you know, I'm graduating from high school. What am I going to do? Um, and then I jumped straight into, of course, something else, another field that was not pertaining to anything with design, but I got my, you know, like computer science degree. It was kind of strange. I, went to that. I had no idea. But, yeah. So then, but that actually made me realize my, my truth and my, my passion was really not to detach from anything of that form is to go back into design. And so then I went into fashion design and I went to FIDM. So I got my degree in fashion design at uh, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in San Francisco. And then I started working in the industry for like 10 years. You know, like I worked for The Gap, um, Wilkes Bashford, uh, you know, um, was it Foxy? You know, all these different like Shady Grove. Karen oh, Apple. I didn't know you worked at Shady Grove. <laughs> I did. And then I worked with Jane Tice. She was the originator of the spree with, you know, um, mm -hmm. the other um, so, you know, I was really in the realm of that. Yeah, that's how I met Bill Austin. Oh, okay. Grove. That makes know, sense. And, uh, and then The Gap. Right. And, then and that's that, where I met you. <laughs> exactly. It was so lovely, right? We were, so that was my last for the industry because when I was working at The Gap, I started studying French couture from Simone Sethna. And then, um, yeah, that's where... I decided after I graduated from her school in Couture, I wanted to do my own business. And then I got married to Rick. And then that's how we kind of, you know, he was already like his own entrepreneur. He was an industrial designer and he inspired me. And he said, yeah, you know, definitely start your own business. So we, that's how we started our own business together um, as a duo couple in a way to support each other. Uh, and then I had my, yeah, I had my own atelier space and started doing my own creation. So yeah, I did in my own business for quite a long time. But as you know, then I stopped um, when I had breast cancer. And that was like when I was 47 or something. And then I took a little break, like a sabbatical for like five, I don't know, five, to five years, I took a rest. But during that time, I didn't like stay still, I was painting, you know, and I did watercolor painting. So, you know, I kind of branched off and grew and cultivate it through this in my spiritual life. Uh, so I do both now. I mix both couture and painting somehow and do performances. And I also do digital art. Um, you know, I'm just kind of going with what I feel is right. I, I'm not stuck in one position now though. That's, that's really interesting. Well, I had no idea you were doing all of those things. That's great. Yeah, so now it's kind of like pulling it all together in a full circle. And um, I just do what I feel I want to do. Now I want to do murals, you know, like artwork and things like that. Uh, and then, but I'm also still, you know, going into couture and 
but it's like I I do what I feel is right, and then I just work with it. They're 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 all commissions, so that's so. So when you started, how did you get your first clients? Yeah. So uh, what happened is that when I studied, oh, are you talking when I had my own business? Yes, yeah, so when you had your own business as a couturier. Yeah. So I actually uh, created five pieces because that's all I can afford, you know, it's to create like five, <laughs> really expensive. Or, or five pieces. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a lot of, you know, it was my investing was, you know, you know, me and Rick's work together. So I created five pieces and I was wearing them. And then I was walking around and then, I don't know if you know Monique Jang, but she owned Cicada during that time. And she saw me wearing my evening coat and she goes, well, wait, who, what, who's that? Like, oh, that's me. Hi, I'm calling Quinn. This is one of my pieces. And she said, well, wait a sec, I want to have this in my store. And I go, oh, really? So then this was by commission only, of course, right? So then I put my work there and then for some reason you know she had my work in there and then um I got a client which was the opera it was like the the, the president of the opera guild Patricia wow. Sprint and then she commissioned me to create her evening gown for the first opening opera I don't know she was in and I was so honored it was like oh my god this is the time I can do my French couture work you know and da, da. so that's how it opened up and then I developed her as a clientele and she became my oldest client for like 25 years I was with her for a long time but from there she actually it was all by word and then mm -hmm. I would have one client for one year then it became 12 the next year <laughs> they kept on multiplying but you know it took time like it wasn't like overnight success or anything I mean I started developing it and it just became it grew and then eventually I just started expanding and then I I reached out to like celebrities and then I had, you know, a publicist kind of like in LA, um, but it was very small still. Like I still kept my little atelier space. It was me and my two seamstresses. I did everything else. I did all the pattern work, design, you know, ordering fabrics, did the marketing myself, you know, so I was a one man band for the longest time, but I kind of like that. I'm kind of a control freak. <laughs> You seem like the farthest thing from a control freak to me, but um, if you are, it's only in the most special, wonderful way. I can only imagine. Um, what I want to know is what is the difference between couture, making couture and making ready to wear? Um, so couture is really about measurements, right? It's about, I take each person as, as a beautiful soul and I measure their body. I learn about their their aura, their style. I actually take that and I make it, I actually um, take them to the next level. So it's almost like being a doctor, a fashion doctor. <laughs> and then mass production, you know, yes, I work in the mass production and I'm thinking of, oh, well, is this going to sell? Is this going to be a trend? You know, I'm working with a whole team it's a big mass production. It's lots of money. And we have to gamble on what's going to sell, what's going to be, you know, let's, let's create this big collection and it's all going to be about sizes, two, four, six, eight, or whatever it may be, whatever it is decided on the designer that's creating this, but um, it's a big team. Mm -hmm. And it's also, it's like a big business, you know, and mine's a big business too, but but I get control over it because I am the sole designer. I get to take care of one person at a time. And I love doing that. I'm like a one-on-one -on -one kind of person. I love to know my clientele. That's wonderful. Um, I think we covered most of the questions that I sent you already. <laughs> but I have, a, I have a couple more. I, I do talk fast. Like, blah, 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 blah. That's okay. Okay, what does a typical day as a couture designer look like? Hmm. Well, especially in my case, and I only could speak for my own journey, but um, let's say I have um, like maybe 10 clients that I have to do in three months. So what does that mean? I have to schedule meetings with them. I have to create the designs for them. And then I also have to order fabrics. So that means I have to order 10 different types I have to study 10 different of my clientele their character and manage it and schedule it into my schedule and and be able to accomplish it in three months 
that means uh, deciding on their design, you know, working with them, and also um, ordering fabrics, and then working on the pattern with them, measuring them, uh, working on the pattern with them, you know, like pattern drafting, and then working with my seamstress and then managing the fit times. So usually I have like three, three or four fittings with them, and then it's complete. So it's like I divide each one up. So they become like, um, yeah, separate projects, each one. And so it's like a full day. It's like a full day of um, fun challenges. What can Absolutely. I say? <laughs> and it's changing all the time, right? Like, right. oh, the fabric didn't come in yet. Or, okay, so that fabric, now we're going to change it to something else. But, you know, it's all about problem solving and managing it and also being peaceful in between all those times. It's like, it, does that make sense? Like somehow. Totally. Like, yeah. And I'm working like nonstop, like 24 hours. Although of course I have a life outside of that, but my mind is actually in it all the time. But that's what I love. I love, I love it all because it's never, ever the same. Every person I work with is so different and so new and so exciting. You know, it's never the it's never repetitive in any ways. It's always a challenge. So, you know, doing this makes me roll with the punches. It makes me just, okay, so this is what's happening now. I'm going to live in this moment. This is the challenge. Let's work on this. And so I have to be very organized as well as very creative at the same time. It's kind of a little bit of both. And how do you balance that? Um, I do. Um, you know, during that time when I had my business, I was doing Tai Chi mm -hmm. and I was doing Qigong. So I did a lot of meditation in between that, um, getting a lot of sleep when I can. That's so important, but meditation as well. So it's all in the moment. Sometimes I would just take that time to drink my tea, do a little meditation, burn some incense and just chill out because I do need that personal time to rejuvenate or else I'm totally depleted. Right. Yeah. Where do you get your inspiration? Um, so my inspiration, of course, is from each person that I meet, but also I bring in um, this Taoist way where I bring in this kind of mother nature. Um, yeah, I'm always inspired by something beautiful like flowers or birds or, you know, I get inspired by music. Um, yeah, lots of music. But mostly, I didn't know. Somehow when I see my client, I also get to understand them. And then, yeah, somehow I incorporate some kind of beautiful nature that goes into their gown. <laughs> um, or it's a theme that they're working on, you know, and then I work with them with the theme. And then I add that feminine touch. I'm very feminine, very romantic. But yet that, there's that masculine part where it's very architectural at the same time. So I love mixing both together. I love seeing your work and the architecture behind it. It is gorgeous. It is really gorgeous. And that one image, the first image on your website of the woman in the white coat, is it a coat or a robe or it's this big fl flowing but very architectural looking gown with flowers on it. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that piece um, definitely is sculptural. I always work with silk. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be like silk or gans or something like that because, you know, it just all depends, right? Because fabric has its own character. And as a designer, you need to learn all of the characters of the fabrics, right? Medium right. weight, light weight, heavy weight, and they all express in their own personalities. So um, I, what I do is I use that fabric to interpret my message, right? So yeah, so that piece is, just has this kind of organic feeling, you know, right? Or structural. Mm -hmm. um, so I love, I love expressing through fabrics too, you know, uh, and I love draping. So do you love draping? I love draping. I, I do like draping. I don't do it very often, but I do like it a lot. <laughs> I do, um, when I'm doing historical costumes, I, I do need to drape uh, a lot of those because I get the dress form all set up for my body shape, you know, my, and, um, and then I drape the pattern on there because it's just sort of quicker than trying to draft it. And I love, you know, because I teach French couture, I love teaching on the dress form, the, on the human body, because there's so many ways to look at it in the angle, mm -hmm. you know, where you turn it 
you know, so, so it is all about 3D, you know, it's just really important to understand the human body and the movement and the physics of, of us and the way we move and understanding it all. So it all comes together because of my dance background and my music background, and then a fashion background, it just all melts together. And what about ice skating? And I used, to, <laughs> I used to be a competitive ice skater and I had a private coach, Lisa, and it was for 10 years. I was intensely in that. And that actually, um, because of that discipline, um, competitiveness, but to myself, it has no, nothing competitive to others, but to myself of my being perfectionist and, and working hard at something and performing and, and really focusing and making it happen. And I only have this one chance kind of feeling it has trained me to go into fashion and to be, to have my own business actually go to, and to not give up. Like I never give up on anything. I just make it happen. Yeah. So all those kind of um, qualities helped me through ice skating into my fashion world as well. And even working with performers and artists and dancers, and I understand them because I used to be like them too, disciplined and performing and then express you know their their profession i totally respect and i totally get it so so then now when i create i feel like i'm their coach through fashion you know and getting them ready and getting them empowered through my designs as they perform in their own realm that's wonderful oh my goodness colleen <laughs> okay so what is your favorite and least favorite part about being a couturier um, I really don't like to like, uh, think about money. So that's the, that's the sad thing about it. See? Because I, I mean, I wish like, you know, because yes, I mean, I know money is needed and we need to make money to feed ourselves and to actually flourish and keep the business going. But if I didn't have to think about that, that would be so nice. I mean, because, um, somehow sometimes the money part kind of stunts my challenge. Like, like I rather just design from the heart and then I create it and then we'll go, okay, well, let's see how we're going to sell this piece. Right. Um, but what I, I mean, the good thing is that I don't have to really worry about, cause when I get commissions, I already kind of quote a price and then they give it to me. And then I can just kind of be, you know, like I can do my, my work, you know, so that is the supportive part of that. But let's say, um, you know, if I had to go like, oh, no, I need to make like billions of dollars. That totally is not something that I want to think about. Like, I'm a, I'm a true pure artist in a way that I would rather just create and then figure out the money part later. Maybe that's not good. But anyways, that's my kind of forte. <laughs> I'm a true pure artist. That's all, you know. So what's your favorite part? My favorite part is just creating like someone commissions me to, to create or to collaborate with them. And then I just go, yes, just, give, you know, let me be a part of this, you know, let me be, definitely. So um, definitely um, creating, having the opportunity to create with others is like my, I don't know. It's just, a, I love that the most. Okay. One more question. Mm -hmm. Do you ever travel for work? Mm -hmm. I always travel for work and you know I don't know if you know this but I'm, I've been a like a fashion journalist for two documentaries so they're 60 minutes 10 years ago I did one it was with the minority ethnic groups and I went with Duffy Wang and he was the film director he took me there with another designer Jude and we did a documentary on the minority ethnic groups and we we explored their their life um you know, their craft and the old ancient ways um, and learned about their, their, I think their, the way of life and their or sustainability and eco way of living and creating fashion. And so I love being um, like a teacher, interpreter, a messenger in that form. And so I just recently did another one in Shanghai and it was about the cheap house, the chunk oh, sum. Oh, wow. And Yes, I did that um, before the COVID. We went to Shanghai and I was with my student. I invited my student, Arkady, and he was my partner. And we explored the Chipel, all the masters and where it was created in the 1920s. And then we did this huge 60 minute documentary on, on the, all the masters. And then it wasn't, it wasn't unfortunately unveiled at PBS yet, but we're hoping eventually it will. 
it was supposed to last year, but because of the pandemic and everything, it just was a challenge. So anyways, um, I did, we did a Chi Pao documentary on the story of the Chi Pao. So I definitely do travel in that form. Also, my work goes to Paris. I'm in this, I've been invited as a member um, in one of these small atelier kind of um, couture, au couture um, federation in Paris. And I'm the only American that was invited because I study French couture. So I do show with them when I can. And that's such an honor. So that's in Paris. Um, and I've shown my work in Shanghai, MOCA, you know, my work has been in the museum there with Rick. Um, and, you know, just different things like museums, yeah, all over the world, I've kind of shown my work. So I do travel a lot, um, just to show my work, but also to learn more too, and to be inspired. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you, Jennifer. I love you. We I go back you. Long time. Long time. Yeah, and it's so it's fair and everything. <laughs> I, I love it. And it's our journey. But you know, every time I see you, it's like it's like timeless. You know, it's like a time capsule that I will always carry with me because I don't know, we knew each other. Yeah, we knew each other when it was kind of not innocent, but it was very pure too, mm -hmm. you know, time of our life. And uh I still see you as that too, which is so precious. I know. <laughs> well, you've always been the kind, generous person in my life. So I thank you so I much. Her. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited about this, what you're doing. And it's so much needed. Um, you're such a great teacher as well as a designer too, and to educate and to I, you're a great educator too. You're just there to give and inspire, you know? So thank you so yeah. much for, that, for, for our industry too and our, you know, as designers. I think it's really important for people to understand what the fashion industry really is and where their clothes come from and how they're made. And wow. sort of one, of one of my big goals is to is to educate people about that. So they really understand what goes into the clothes that they buy and they can make more informed choices. You know, that makes sense because it is like a beautiful craft. It's like an old art. And I know we do things mass production, but even that person that's sewing it, you know, gave their heart, you know? And so I thank you for that because we need, we do need to appreciate it. it's, there's so much involved in creating the design. Right. And, and people, people also just don't understand that, you know, every piece of clothing that they buy down to their underwear is made by someone else. It's like someone actually makes <laughs> another human being. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. so, yeah. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, have a wonderful day, Colleen. And thank you again so much. Okay. Thanks, Jennifer.